pleased to present for your consideration. Welcome to the Jabberbox Podcast, everyone. I'm one of your hosts, Andy Vaughn. And with me is my good friend, longtime friend, Daniel Singleton. How's it going, Dan? Hey, what's going on, everyone? Thanks for joining us today. We just finished up with the uh, Microsoft Xbox uh, Bethesda presentation at E3 2021. And uh, we got a lot to unpack here, Andy. Hell yeah. Like Dan said, we are on day two of the E3 gaming conference, and it has been a lot of fun for us, uh, as it is for each year honestly. Um, but because we have so much to unpack right before the Square Enix uh, show, let's go ahead and dive right into it. Dan, you're the resident Xbox guy. What was your first impressions of the showcase? What did you think? How did you feel? Go ahead and lay it on us. They had so much content to unpack on us to, uh, this year. It was uh, Some of it was obviously expected. We knew we were going to talk about Starfield. Uh, we didn't know what we were going to get. We got a teaser trailer, no gameplay, not a big surprise, but it looked great. I'm pretty excited about it. Don't know entirely much. You know, they didn't really give us much background on it. Like, what's what's this going to entail? What are we going to be doing in this game? Right. Not entirely sure, but I'm definitely playing it. I'm excited. Uh, They did announce a release date for it of November 11th, 2022. So we got about a year and a half out from it. Uh, I'm, I'm anticipating we'll see a lot more about it next year, including gameplay uh, in engine examples, things like that. But uh, it was finally nice to see something other than just a title and a a logo. Yeah, for sure. Uh, You know, they really wanted to start off the showcase with a banger and they had Todd Howard of Bethesda coming out and they, that's what kicked off the whole conference was with Starfield, which was an in-game cinematic. We got to see some cool stuff. I like the look of everything. I like, you know, that you're going to be traveling from what we can tell. And I did like the the little uh, dashboard when they were flipping on all the numbers and whatever like that. And that's how we got the release date before they, they said at the end, which was pretty cool. So it'll be exclusive to the PC and the Xbox consoles, as I thought it was going to be, you know, with it being a new title on the acquisition of Bethesda from Microsoft. So it looks really cool i'm looking forward to seeing more on what they're going to showcase to us you know like that that's definitely something now that has my interest other than just a title starfield you know and me wanting to get the new xbox i was also finding uh, i was also asking myself while they were showing us that teaser trailer i wonder how many easter eggs were in there that we have no idea or even easter eggs until we play the game and what made me think of that was um, the helmet with the bullet hole in it and the, the, the sticky pad that was on it says do not use. Like, right. is there a backstory to things, those those types of items in the teaser trailer? I don't know. It could just be a funny joke some developer put in as, as a, hey, keep an eye out for this, uh, buddy, when it, when they show this at E3. It's an inside joke between them. Uh, we don't know. Yeah. But it, it's a thought I had while I was watching it. For sure. Um, It's very exciting so uh like like we said no more information on it other than what they were stating but it's cool that we got to see a a first look of it and then we'll uh, see more of it for sure definitely for next year and in the coming months we'll get some more information on there um i don't know dan what other uh, things really came up to your attention i know that they showcased halo showcase halo but uh before we talk about that I would like to just point out that um, while I may have gotten the name wrong, my one of my E3 predictions was spot on, hit the nail on the head, and that is uh, Back for Blood. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So it's basically Left for Dead by another name. It's the same creators, uh, everybody that was involved with that development of uh, Left for Dead, Left for Dead 2. They're on board for Back for Blood. It looks very similar, if not identical, without the same name. Uh, I'm super excited about it. I loved playing it. Um, it, It's going to be difficult, obviously, to possibly get enough people, uh, which is only four. It's up to four. Um, But get people to coordinate in order to play. But I think that once it comes out, it's going to gain some steam. It will be easier to find people to play with. And I'm I'm pretty stoked. Well, especially with it coming out 
you know, day one for Game Pass. So once that comes oh, yeah, out, day one, oh, everybody's going to be jumping on there. So even if you don't have friends or coworkers or family members that want to jump on and do that, you're going to have if they do it right and they have the the lobby essentially where you can kind of just pick up and play there's going to be a lot of people ready to go out the gate and whether they play well or not that's going to be completely uh, a crapshoot like it is for most games but at least you're going to be able to get in there and get your play through you know really enjoy slaying those zombies yeah for sure for sure i was just mostly excited because i i got that that prediction correct yeah even if i was wrong in the name that i'll I'll still count it as a win. <laughs> uh, so let's get to Halo then. Uh, what did you think? Yeah. Man. Okay, so Halo is like, I'm a big Halo fanboy. That's no secret. Everybody that knows me knows that. <clears throat> I am. Uh, I was a little skeptical, you know, when they first announced this some time ago. Uh, but based on everything we've seen up to this point and including what we just saw, um, I'm getting more and more excited the closer we get to it. It looks amazing. The uh, the multiplayer in-engine uh, graphics and gameplay that they were showing us was phenomenal. It looked like all the good things about Halo are going to be combined into one. <clears throat> they It looks like it's going to be a lot of big maps, which I'm a huge fan of. Uh, things like Blood Gulch and Sidewinder from, you know, the original Halo, uh, things of that scope. I'm pretty excited for that kind of stuff. It'll be interesting to see what kind of gameplay, uh, multiplayer game types they have. Uh, they showcased obviously the things like, um, deathmatch and capture the flag. They had people running around, punching each other with skulls. They had people running around, uh, with the hammer, with the sword, with all of the traditional weapons, um, new, ab- I don't know if there's new abilities going to be involved in this, um, but it looks like all of the abilities from the past may be brought in. The vehicles all looked great. And uh, I'm excited about the new campaign. I want to see what, what is going on with the Master Chief moving forward. Uh, who's this new AI? I, I don't want to spoil too much, obviously. I can't. I don't know much beyond there's a new AI. And they're going to try to find out what happened with Cortana and this new AI. Um, but it looks good, and I'm pretty excited. Right. So it's coming out this year, coming out holiday 2021. Uh, it's going to be on the, uh, from what I understand, all the, the Xbox consoles. So Xbox One, Xbox One X, Xbox Series S and Series X and PC and then cloud gaming. So uh, I know that the, you know, they mentioned that the multiplayer is going to be free. Which is gonna, which is awesome. So yep. you're not gonna have Xbox Gold. You're not gonna need that for for Microsoft, or at least you won't have to purchase the multiplayer. It did look fantastic. I will give it that. I'm kind of uh, surprised that they didn't show any more of the campaign. You know, after last year and the way it looked. But uh, if it looks anything like the multiplayer, it's gonna be pretty fantastic looking. Yeah, I can't imagine it'll be much different. Uh, they're going to be using the same engine for both. I I can't imagine why they want it. I mean, that would ha- that would require developing a different engine or using a whole different engine. Why would you do that? Be counterproductive. So I would imagine it's going to look very similar. Uh, th- that's just speculation, of course, but I, I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be the case. Right. Uh, so moving on, Bethesda did showcase a lot of their games coming to game pass that have already done so that they're bringing more on there uh there's including doom eternal which a lot of their games are looking to be optimized for the next gen console so they're going to be running at the 60 frames per second and looking just as great as they did when they came out if not better for some of them so that's pretty cool um have you tried out a lot of their games since they brought them over to game pass um not I mean, not on Game Pass specifically, like I bought Doom Eternal, just outright bought it because I wanted to play it and it looked amazing. And I was not disappointed in any way. Well, not any. I should take that back. I rescind that mark. Uh, I will say that the multiplayer in Doom Eternal is, leaves something to be desired. But the campaign and the, 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 the solo play, fantastic. Like one of the best Doom games ever made. Nice. 
Uh, they did. Uh, as for as for things like Fallout seventy six, I've never played it. I know that it had um, not great reviews when it first came out for seventy six. It did stumble uh, I am a little bit. Yeah, I am a Fallout fan. I played New Vegas. I played three. I played four. Really enjoyed them. Put hundreds, maybe thousands of hours into them. Um, but I, yeah, I've never played seventy six just because of uh, what I've heard about heard about it when it first launched, and I never went back. So and, and came back to it. So with uh, Fallout 76 and they announced the expansion Steel of Rain coming out free for all Fallout 76 players in July. And then they're going to be doing the pit expansion, which you're going to be head, you know, running around Pittsburgh. Is that something you're looking to jump into? Honestly, at this point, I feel like I'm late to the game and uh, I'll probably just focus on new things moving forward. Uh Probably not going to circle back to 76, even with the expansions. Uh, I feel like I've missed too much up to this point. I'm not going to try to jump in the middle of uh, of something I'm not f- completely familiar with when it's been out long enough that there are so many other people out there that are. Uh, it would just be, I don't want to play catch up in right. short. Uh, so, but... I mean, okay, so speaking of catch up, you know, they did Sea of Thieves and they're going to be doing the Pirates of the Caribbean crossover expansion, uh, Pirates Live, which will be coming out June 22nd. Are you in the same boat with as Fallout 70? I'm not in the same boat uh, with with that as I am with 76. Um, Oh, go ahead. Hey, Andy, your audio is screwed, man. All right, better? <clears throat> it is better. All right. So go ahead and uh, jump in. So fall, uh, Sea of Thieves with the expansion, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean crossover with Disney being uh, Pirates Live uh, coming out June 22nd. So you're going to be jumping into that? Uh, I, I really want to, for sure. Uh, I'm not in the same boat with uh, the Sea of Thieves a Pirate's Life expansion coming as I am with 76, because, like I said, I've never, I never played 76. I, I would have to play from scratch, from square zero, or from square one. I have no background in that game. Sea of Thieves, I played probably about 1,000, 1,200 hours on it, and uh, I, while I haven't played in a while, um, this is something that may may pull me back in, uh, especially with if I can get the crew I used to play with uh, back in when this game first came out. If I can get them uh, back on board, then I think it would be really good to sail with that crew and uh, experience what they have in store for us with this Disney team up. Awesome. Uh, so they also showcased one game that I thought looked very fun and goofy. Uh, so Party Animals, which will be a console launch exclusive multiplayer madness day one on Game Pass. It just looks like you choose an animal, you choose a weapon, and then you guys are just trying to off each other in all different ways and all different levels. I saw them fighting each other on the wings of an airplane. That game looks a lot of fun. It reminds me of what, you know, as I, we were said it during the showcase, it reminds me of something that's stupid fun, like Ultimate Chicken Horse was. Yeah. So I'm very much looking forward to checking this game out. Yeah, I'm, I'm agree with you 100% on that. It looks like it's uh, just silly and fun and lighthearted and a good way to unwind. Like, it's not a game you have to take seriously, like a Sea of Thieves, like a Starfield, like a Halo. It's something that you can just jump into, you know, hey, I got 40 minutes. Let's uh, let's get together and play a quick round of whatever that's going to be. And that's definitely the vibe I got from that. Awesome. Uh, so I know that they also showed off some of the games. There's that uh, 2.5 HD game, uh, the uh, RPG, the Ayudin Chronicles. That's a, a game that I kickstarted. Looks really cool. Uh, and then we got the announcement of the Ayud and Chronicles Rising, which will be coming out before the main game. So that's going to be a prequel. I'm very much looking forward to that. Do you have any thoughts on that one? I do not, other than um, it, the graphics on that looked very similar to the, another game that they uh, showcased, which was Replaced. Yes. 
Uh, it has that same graphic style, almost like a 2D scroller, with, but it has that 3D element uh, to it. I don't really know how to describe it. 2.5. It, it looks like <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun. But, you know. Yeah, 2.5. 2. It's um, it looks like a, it looks really nice. It looks like a throwback using modern technology. So it it almost like perfects that 16, 32, 64 bit style. And um, I actually think it would be I, the thought I had while we were watching it anyway, was that it'd be really cool to get a Castlevania game like that, because I remember playing Castlevania on the NES and it would be great if they could make an, a Castlevania game in that style, that 2.5 style. I think yeah. it, would, it would mesh really well. Oh, well, you know, right. Reach out to Konami and tell them to quit with the pachinko machines. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there was a, there was a lo- load of games that came out that they announced that were just fantastic. Unfortunately, we're not going to have the time to kind of dive into them before the next uh, conference, but uh, the next one, and I think the last one that just looked amazing because we didn't get our Fable, we didn't get the you know, perfect Elder Scrolls 6. We didn't get the Elder Scrolls 6, but they did show Forza Horizon 5. comes out November 9th. It takes place in Mexico. That game just looks so pretty and so fun. The arcade style of Forza Horizon is very much alive in this, where you're getting the pinatas, and it's an open-world game. They did mention it was kind of like a battle royale, so it just looks like they're going to dump you into this this world that is photorealistic, you know, is what they're saying with, with their cameras. Um, and you're just going to kind of jump into different races and different, you know, uh, gameplays. It it just looks looks fucking incredible, yeah. you know. Yeah, when they were explaining how they captured some of the detail, that was really impressive. Uh, they were talking about like they set up cameras in certain locations of of real life Mexico for like two days, and they would just capture all that footage, and then they were incorporated into the gameplay. So it right. looks photorealistic. Even when you're playing, uh, the, the, <laughs> yeah, the the sky is it changes dynamically as you move through the uh, through the world. So um, they also said something about uh, you're going to be able to go onto I don't remember the name of it, but it was an active volcano in Mexico, yep. um, and it was it was like they were updating the uh, the grounds in real time. So if there was ever any changes, it would be reflected in the game in almost real time that's awesome that's gonna be it's gonna be so fun that is very much going to be one of the titles that i will be checking out because i know that one's also coming to game pass day one that's gonna be something once i get the new xx i want to play that on a series x i want that power you know to go with the tv that i have to really just give me the best way to play essentially for that particular game so Mm -hmm. uh so I mean, overall, it was a pretty good. What did you think? It was a pretty good conference, right? Yeah, it was jam packed. Uh, there, there was a few things I wish they had talked about or given us more information on. That I mean, we're just gonna have to wait. That's just the, it's the nature of the beast, I suppose. Like there was one game they showed called Contraband. Um, no idea what that's gonna be about. Is it a smuggling game? Is it a heist game? Is it like a zombie survival game? Wasn't entirely sure. But it looked intriguing enough that um, when they said it's going to be day one Game Pass, um, yeah, I'll I'll give it a shot. If it's going to be on Game Pass, why the hell wouldn't I? Right. All right. We we also got some more. We did get some more background on like Far Cry 6. Uh, We confirmed we will be playing as as, uh, the female character, the female uh, protagonist. And uh, her name is going to be Danny, I think is what we we heard. And yeah. it looks great. They gave, they gave us some in-game, in-engine uh, gameplay, and it looked really good. But like Andy said, there's so much that they released. Uh, I, the only other big thing I can th- think of that they that we haven't talked about yet is Redfall, which is how they ended. It's going to be the the exclusive uh, open-world, immersive sh- first... Per- I don't know if it's first person or third person. They didn't specify that. I think it's first person, but it's going to be a shooter. And it's like a vampire survival game yeah it seems very it looked, into sunset overdrive a little bit yeah and it looked it looked 
like a ton of fun. Like every, each character has a different unique ability and they all complement each other and work together. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. They said they were going to be releasing summer of 2022. So I guess we'll see. We'll see. We'll almost certainly see more next year if they keep to that timeline. Oh yeah, for sure. All right. Well, that concludes this episode of the Jabberbox show you know, podcast here uh, for E3. That was the Microsoft Bethesda conference. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, that notification button, that like button. You can find us over on patreon.com slash dandy digital. And, uh, you know, we'll move on to the Square Enix conference next. So we'll talk to you guys soon.